Hello, welcome back to another exciting tutorial. And today we will be looking into V-Ray material part two. So if you wanted to know more about the basic stuff of V-Ray materials, the reflections, the refractions, basic setups, you can refer to this video up here. And in this video number two, we will be looking not just the basic materials, but more towards how do we apply a texture, so give more definition to the material. So the first one, we're going to be looking into it's uh, this wood. Okay, so you can see that this wood has some details. Okay, the holes, like the gaps in between, some cracks. Okay, so which is something more detail, more definition about the wood. And secondly, okay, this is that the usual, okay, metal, you know, like gloss, gold type of metal, but uh, with some texture on it. Okay, you can see that the surface, it's um, a matte, you know, like matte without gloss. So this, this part, it's gloss, this part is matte. Okay, and next we have this uh, letter. All right, and I'm going to teach you how to apply texture, different, different textures to make a nice looking leather. And the fourth one, it's the metal. OK, so for this metal, we will apply some textures and make it look kind of rough, dented, you know, damaged type. The fourth one, it's a it's a gloss. OK, it's a gloss, nice, smooth wood texture. And at the back here, we have some nice looking lightings. Okay, light up text. So without further explanations, let's dive straight into this. Okay, so you can see here we have a scene. So simple setup with a background. Okay, so I have a backdrop like this. Okay, it's black color. And then I have a few lights on top. Okay, and then here, here's my camera, and the rest is my objects. Okay, and uh, I'm going to quickly explain about what is going on with the material editor. Alright, so uh, these are all the lights. So I'm using this uh, V-Ray-like material, okay, for the text behind, for it to glow. So you can see that we have uh, pink color, light the text, and then it has the reflection of the lights like com coming through here. And then same with the material, and then it has some pink light going through here. Okay, and then this is our uh, wood, smooth gloss wood material. So you can see that we have some connections that it's coming into that material. So the first one is the color. Okay, of course, uh, we have a bump, but if you look at it, it, it seems smooth. So that is why uh, bump is not having much of a, you know, contrast. It's just a flat color. And as for roughness, roughness, it's uh, something that makes that texture or the reflection looks rough. Okay, I'll explain uh, what are those maps about in a while. Okay, and after that, we have this. Uh, rough dented damaged metal so you can see it, it involves with more more maps in it so we have the basic color and also we have an ambient occlusion okay i'll explain what is ambient occlusion so don't worry about it right now and we have a normal bump map that plugs into the bump map and we have a reflection roughness that plugs into it and then we have a displacement, which is the height map, and we have a metalness map. Okay, so you can see that some of the, the the materials are more simple, and some of the materials are more complicated. Okay, and uh, this seems to be the wood on the floor. All right, so you can see that we have this uh, connection. Same thing. This is a color, and that is the ambient occlusion. And right here, it's the V-Ray, V-Ray Comtex that allows us to add an operator, which is a multiply, because I'm using a multiply with the ambient occlusion map onto this texture. And next we have a bump, normal bump. All right, and then we have a reflection roughness, and then we have this displacement. 
Okay, as for the uh, you know the the, the the gold. Okay, the gold material here. It's a very very simple, just a rough reflection roughness on it. Okay, as for the leather. So leather, it, I'm using a, a basic white color. All right. And then I have this normal and uh, reflection roughness and also a displacement height map. And that's it. Okay. So next, you might be wondering, what are those? What am I talking about? Like, What is a normal map? What is the height? What is the roughness? So here's the explanation. Okay, so albedo means color or diffuse. All right. And then normal means bump, you know, like giving surface detail. Okay. We're going to use this normal bump map. And then the height map will give you extra details and make it more believable. Okay. It's a displacement. And roughness means roughness value of a surface. Okay. And AO, it's an ambient occlusion pass. So it is some sort of indirect cast of shadows. And um, let me show you some examples. So you can see, you can try to, to type, you know, like ambient occlusion on uh, Google. And you can see that they show a bunch of uh, images with shadows. And you can see that it is kind of an indirect shadows. So you, you don't see a specific directions of light. Okay, but you know, there are lights coming from the top and then there are shadows then underneath it. Okay. All right, and uh, metalness means metal values in a material. So whether it, it should be more metal or less metal. Okay. And also in order for, for us to, to go through the tutorial, I'll need you guys to go to here. Okay, this is textures.com. So you can register a free account and then you get 15 credits per day for free. All right, and then I'm gonna show you guys like where I get my textures, okay, from this website, and then how to apply it onto our materials on V-Ray. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna clean up my scene. So maybe let me just hide the light first. Okay, and then I'm gonna hide the rest as well. Okay. All right, let me just select all and uh, right click and hide it and turn off my cameras as well. So we're just going to look at this. Okay. So firstly, I want to talk about how I'm, how do I get these models? Okay. So you go to here, this is create tab and then this is geometry. So I actually get my teapot from here. So you can just click and drag after that. You can uh, right click to finished. Okay, right click to finish that creation. And then you can go to modify tab and you can add some radius to make it bigger. You can change the segments and make it more smooth. Okay, I think if not mistaken, by default, it should look something like this. So it's quite low poly, AG. So I don't like that. So I change it to yeah maybe something more dense. So in my case, this is a uh, eight. Okay. So you can pump it up to 16 if you want to. All right, let's get rid of it. So the next one, it's a cylinder. Okay. All right. And, but uh, this is the cylinder. It, I, I got it from here. So you go to, uh, extend the primitives. So here's the uh, cylinder chamfer cylinder. So click and drag, pull it up left click and push it further all right and left click and right click to finished so of course if you want to change something you can go to here material uh so not not material sorry it's a modified tab so you can change the the fillet segments and make it smoother if you want to or you prefer to have it like this okay uh kind of a chamfer edges and this is the fillet okay how far you want to cut it Okay, and you can change the height, you can change the radius. Okay, and next, this is pretty simple, and it's under uh, standard primitives. You can just click and drag for a sphere. That's it. 
and the next one it's a box okay chamfer box same it's under here extended primitives and uh, chamfer box click and drag pull it up click and pushed left click and right click to done okay all right and um, next uh, there's one more thing that I want to talk about so just now you you saw that I have this you know like cool uh, backdrop here okay a background that allows the, the reflection and the light to bounce nicely so I actually got it from here okay so you can um, create a simple plane okay you can go to next uh, modify tab right click and uh, convert to editable poly and next you can click on H ages double click on it shift and drag to extrude the ages and shift again hold shift key drag and hold shift key and drag like this and to turn this into curve corners you can double click this Control double click that Control double click this and click on chamfer settings and push that distance okay and also after you got the desired distance that you want just increase the number of lines and that will make it round like this okay so I think I think I've covered pretty much all okay I left out the text so to create this text you can just go to here text plus okay click to drag for some amount of sizes and then right click go to modify tab and you can change the size right here the size of the text okay and then you can type whatever text you want learn okay that it will update right here and then uh, if you want it to be uh, you, if you want a text to, to have some depth on it you can go to geometry and have some amount of extrude okay and then you can even change the phone okay the phone type text right here and also I like to apply beveling so that you can have some nice bevel around the edges of the text okay which makes it better and after that I rotate it up for 90 degrees and I uh, kind of paste it right here okay and of course you can duplicate by shift clicking okay shift and drag to make a copy okay so that is about how to create text so next let's uh, kind of uh, you know hide this again height let's go over how to create these materials okay And in this previous you know like previous uh, tutorial where I talk about materials um, it looks like this okay so this is the previous layout that we're working with it's called compact material editor okay and this time I'm going to show you guys on how to work with slate material editor so from here you click this and then switch to this all right and about how to do a quick setup for V-Ray, you go to here. Render setup. So by default, it should be scanline renderer. Okay? Or sometimes it could be Arno if you're using the new version of uh, 3ds Max. And you'll need to switch to V-Ray. And then you go to V-Ray tab. Uh, from here, you gotta change to bucket. So from progressive to bucket, so I prefer to use bucket and then uh, for some reasons I, I prefer it that way so that it gives me the, the kind of a, a final, close to final look. And um, you don't have to change the rest. So go to here, GI. So by default, this one should be brute force. Okay, so we need to change the irradiance map so that we can render it quicker as for preview quality. 
and you can click this to have a kind of a drop down a tap and you should change to low and by default this should be 50 you should change to 20 okay so after you change change to 20 so it renders uh, slightly faster okay and that's it for the setup basic setup and that's all okay we can turn it off next I'm going to teach you how to set up this okay so we can put this aside all right and let's look at our uh, metal here okay so for this metal so you just track it out okay right here and usually whenever you're doing a setup it's always good to have that small preview window so you can right click here and open a preview window okay yeah, drag it up all right and for that color so to set up that that kind of a you know like um, metal looking gold looking material so we need to set this to about like a brown yellowish but desaturated color okay so if you want to follow my value it's it's fine but you can kind of like drag around and get the, the feel of what kind of color you want okay after that so for that reflect color we have to choose yellow so kind of like that bright okay after that so I mentioned before from that previous V-Ray material tutorial glossiness is the thing that makes that reflection becomes blurry so if we type about like the 0 0.75 we get something blurry like this okay and so right here it's the metalness because we want it to be a metal so we have to pump this up to one okay so right now you can see instantly it changed and turned into metal and how do we get this you know like um, nice looking patterns which a uh, certain part that has a higher uh, clearer reflections and some of the parts that has a blur, blur reflections and also how do I get the text that that is completely matte which you can see that the text is, is very clear so I have a few textures right here which uh, I can show you guys so I have created this okay we test with different results one is a black um, you know like black background and white text so whenever you plug this map into roughness of the slot it turn this into matte and then it makes this a full gloss okay black means okay black means clear reflections white means rough okay blurred reflections which means it's a matte all right and then the second texture it's something like this so this is kind of having a blurred reflections and this is totally matte and at the third one we have some checker pattern like this okay so which ends up it looks like that so you can create this three different kind of textures and then you try to apply and see how it looks and then for the model that we are using we have to go down to here okay under you know like brdf the models you can switch to use roughness okay and then you don't have to change anything from here okay because later on we will pluck a texture and then it will control the values from the texture okay so you can see that one is completely matte zero it's completely smooth clear reflections so you go to here reflection gloss uh, sorry reflection rough click and drag general and you got to choose bitmap and from this bitmap 
we got to choose this open up okay so you can see that this is how it, it looks like and then to apply this texture into this or to apply this material into the object so there are two ways so you can select that right click assign material to selection okay or you can click the small little dots right here click and drag and drop to here okay all right so after we apply to this okay let me kind of delete that and we want to know like how is it looking how is it look how does it look slight okay where is this text being being placed so we have to click this texture and click on show shaded material in the viewport and we're going to change to dx mode so you can you can see that wow this this is this is kind of small okay so I, I want the text to be bigger all right and so that I have to apply this uh, UVW UVW map okay and I, I have to choose like which kind of a projection mapping that I want to apply to my teapot so you gotta click box and let's do uh, gizmo transform so go to here click on gizmo all right and uh, you can click r for scale and we can kind of scale it up okay make sure it is not distorted okay how do you know because a checker it's always square so if it is not square it means distorted okay something like this scale it even bigger and move it up okay kind of move it over okay there you go all right and next we got to return this back to here so click this all right and lift it that as it is okay next we got to learn how to apply that leather material okay so uh, go to here v-ray material so we can rename this okay so try to practice and uh, rename everything that you created okay so everything it's organized and it won't be a uh, messy scene okay so right here this we got to create leather okay so how do I get those textures so go back to here okay uh, textures.com and after you register a free account okay once you lock in you should have this you know like free credits so let me try to search leather all right so all of these are being created inside substance as you can see that there's a substance logo and substance painter or substance designer for the info it's a texture uh, creation software that creates hyper realistic and and uh, yeah, very good like high resolution textures so you can pick one of those that you like so uh, I think I pick pick up this okay or this I can remember all right and then if, you, if you look into here that you can see that it has a kind of a preview of how it's gonna look like in the end okay and there's a close-up of that so this is the basic texture so for a free account you can get up to 512 size of the texture with 300 dpi and then here's the height map and here's the normal map and here's the roughness okay so which i have explained what are they supposed to do okay and what is the meaning of it so uh, after we downloaded this texture let's go back to here and start loading our texture in so for diffuse I've kind of decided to to remain white okay and then remember we always gonna have a bump map so let's drag this into here okay and then we got we have to go to V-Ray so V-Ray normal map that is what we're going to load instead of just a map okay you can see that previously we load a simple map okay it's a bitmap and for this one we load a V-Ray normal map 
Okay, because a normal map, it's kind of a purplish color, cyan, purplish, pink. Okay, and that normal map, that, that basic bitmap doesn't allow this kind of info to, to be loaded in. So we loaded a very normal map, and then we could load another map. Okay, go to general, bitmap, and we're going to choose from here, leather. Okay, all right. And then we have this roughness map. Okay, so we go to here. We have to change. Remember, just now we, we discussed before, we have to change this to roughness. All right, because the map that is provided from the, the website, it's roughness map. So we got to make sure this and the map that we, we got it, it's the same kind of a channel. Okay, so for roughness, reflection roughness, drag it out. And then you can just pluck a, a basic bitmap inside. So let's check how this is this is roughness. Okay, we're cool. All right. After that, we have a displacement. So just click and drag it out, and go to here, general bitmap, and we're gonna choose displacement, which is the height map. All right. And because in this letter we want some some form of reflection, all right. If you if you buy a leather couch, you know, like that leather will have a reflection. So in order for this whole thing to work and then that reflection roughness to work, we need to turn on reflections. Okay. All right, and you can right click and open preview. and drag it to make it bigger so you can see that it looks like kind of this right here and if you want to have a better preview you can tone down the color a bit okay but sometimes you, you still feel like okay how come this looks a little bit fake you know like the the value doesn't seem to be tally and the, it's not looking like the the, the kind of quality that we have here okay because we haven't really fine-tuned it yet so the first thing that we're gonna do let's go to here and then uh, we have to click this map again and then we're gonna make sure we overwrite this okay and the reason why we're doing that because um, the value that they are generated from there and uh, the incoming gamma it's slightly different so we have to use an overwrite and then we're going to set everything to one and then it will make sure the values of what they uh, adjusted okay initially from substance kind of similar okay of what we will be getting in theory so click on that and then click this and make sure uh, you overwrite that okay so right now you can start to see that this is coming a little bit better okay overwrite okay and then back to here and there's one more thing that we have to adjust which is here so in order to bring out the small little details we have to bring out the bump normally I'll put it up to 60 or 70 and as for the displace, okay, displace, it's it's a very nice thing, but it's a very scary thing. So we need to tone it down to maybe about like 10, 5 to 10 usually. Okay. All right. And I think that's, uh, that's enough. Okay, so we're done with the ladder. And we can right click and assign material to selection. Okay, and then we can kind of assign this to our uh, teapot as well so the next one it's the, the broken metal okay so drag it out here and we'll like to name it as uh, metal all right uh, broken all right <laughs> broken metal <laughs> okay that's uh, funny all right, go back to here, uh, metal. So 
So there are different, different kinds of metal here, and this is the one I'm picking it up. Okay, so you can click and look inside. Say so it's supposed to look like this. Okay, we have a basic color, height map, you know, uh, normal, roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion. Okay, so there's uh, a lot of maps in here. So go to here, diffuse, general, mm, bit map. Okay, uh, uh, not that, uh, it should be metal, okay, metal texture. So albedo means color. All right, and we have it at the one, which is the ambient occlusion. So go to here, ambient occlusion. All right. And I'm going to teach you how to mix this. Okay, remember just now we have this mix uh, metal right here, uh, V-Ray Com connection. So we're having this too right now. And uh, we need to delete this first. And from here, let's plug in a V-Ray Com text. Okay. And. From here, I will plug this into source B, and then I'll plug this into source A. And again, let's have a look at a bigger picture preview uh, thumbnail. So this is how it's, it's it's looking. All right. And as I said, because the gamma is not correct, we're going to click overwrite, and we're gonna want to click overwrite from here as well. AO. And back to here, we will be using multiply. Okay. And then after that, we'll have a bump. And again, bump should link to very normal. And normal map should link to bed map. Okay, let's load a normal map in it. And let's click on it and choose override. Okay, after that, let's turn the material into a roughness mode. Okay, change the roughness and let's load the reflection roughness. And uh, it should be linking back to here, roughness. Okay, click on it, click this again, choose override. Okay, after that, uh, what else? Uh, it should be uh, displacement. Okay, general, bitmap. It should be height. Click on it. Okay, and click on this again. And choose override. And we have uh, metalness. So metalness should be here. Drag it out. General bitmap metalness. Okay, metallic. All right. And let's uh, click this again. So make sure it is being overrided. Okay, and. Let's do some tests, okay, uh, in a while. So after we finish setting up all the stuff, and then we can have a quick look of how it, it's looking. And assign material to selection. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, oh, lousy computer. All right, and... Uh, under the map, under the maps here, uh, usually I set, it, set this up to 60 and this place down back to 10. Okay, and you can see that uh, for most of the stuff, I always set up a UV W map, okay, with a box, and then it will. Okay, let, let's have a look at how it's it's gonna looks like with the texture. So click on this, click on the texture preview. And 
assign material to selection. Okay, we only half the bit. Okay, not not that visible. And how about how about this? Okay, so you can see that it's uh, looking like that. And in order for us to to half, you know, maybe a more stuff right here, we can go to the tile UV tile and type in two. Okay, so you should see more details right here, but let's uh, not tweak too much. Just want to have a kind of a rough idea. Okay, how it it's gonna looks like. Whether the the, the textures are big or small. Okay, something like uh, that. Okay, so you want to know like uh, whether this and this is being placed nicely. But of course, without the render, we we don't really know. We're just gonna see kind of roughly, okay, very vague how it's looking right here. So next, we're gonna set up, um, okay, layout children, okay. So if if these things you know like messed up a lot of your your view right here, so you can drag the the leader down here. And then you can just click laid out children. Okay, and everything will be laid out properly. Okay, and next we have this smooth wood. So I kind of drag it out and I will type it smooth wood. Okay, smooth wood. All right, and drag to apply the texture. Wood texture number two, wood. Okay, in actually if for a color, you don't really have to override the texture. Okay, you don't have to, and that overriding uh, steps only applies to bump, reflection, roughness, displacement. Okay, and uh, the rest. All right, so we have the bump again, and bump should link to. Uh, v ray normal and v ray normal should link to our normal. Okay, and then click on this, click on that, and choose override. And make sure that we turn this model back to roughness mode. Go to BRDF and use roughness and reflection roughness link to bitmap and this should be the one okay and then click on this again and click override okay and let's just apply to this assign material to selection and there's a, a, a last one okay uh, and height all Sorry, unhide all. So this piece, it's it's a wood material, okay, which uh, look, looks like this. Okay, it's actually quite amazing that you can see that this has a lot of details and textures and even the cracks, but the original model, it's, it's just a flat one, okay? So I'm gonna isolate that and I'm gonna turn off the lighting right now. Click Control L turn off or disable the lights and let me create this material okay and we're gonna call it uh, wood all right wood and let's load the texture bitmap okay so wood number one all right it seems that it has an AO on it okay so click here, shift and make a copy and delete this. All right, click this and load an AO in here. And okay, so I wanted to show you that you can see if I put just the basic color, it looks like this. Okay, and the difference after I 
pluck, you know, a very complex. So there's a source A, that is a source B, and we have to use this with multiply. And now let's plug it in. See? All the shadows get darker, everything kind of pops a little bit more. Okay, so that is why you, uh, that AO, it's, it's quite important sometimes. Okay, and then don't forget to turn this model into roughness. Okay, roughness. All right, got you. Okay, bump map. Go to V-Ray, V-Ray normal bump. And let's link this into uh, bitmap. Choose a V-Ray, normal. And click on the texture again. And overwrite. And roughness. Bitmap. And this should be, okay, this should be the roughness. Okay. Click on it. Click on this. Override. And lastly, it should be displacement. Okay, in the bitmap. All right, display should be height. Override. Okay, so you can click this uh, right here straight away. Okay, and don't forget to turn on the reflection. Okay, just so normally wood would then you know uh, reflect that much. Okay, so you can option to have it full reflection and see how it looks like uh, in the render view, or you can choose to have that like maybe less. Okay, and I actually forgot to turn on reflection for this. This is smooth wood. So you can go back to here. Okay, this is a smooth like gloss wood, so you should have. As for this one, I forgot to turn on reflection. So for metal, it should be full metal. All right. Okay. Okay, that's done. And uh, let's apply this to the floor. Okay, click in and drag to here. All right. And by default, okay, so by default that, that wood should be a lot bigger. So you can apply this, you know, like UV, W map and you can kind of tile it maybe twice. Okay, so that the pattern will get uh, slightly smaller. All right, and next, let me show you my basic like setup. So I turning this back on and I turn my cameras on. So over here at the top, I have this V-ray light to about the size of the ceiling. Okay. And then I set the multiplier to about one. And then next I have the smaller ones, which it has a, a slightly warmer color. Okay, and then I set this to about 600, 600, and then multiplier two. Okay, just a bit of kind of an ambient light. And I set this to about blue, multiplier of two as well, and then with a 500 mm. Okay, and the other one from the front, so this is three, okay. Uh, three with uh, warm color light and 2000. And as for the light uh, material from here, I kind of uh, drag it out. Okay, and I have to turn on uh, direct illumination because I want it to act as like lighting and then it, sh it shoots straight into, into that object we want to illuminate. And also I set this up to 10 or 20 and uh, we can turn this into other colors whatever colors we like okay for instance I set this to purple and the other ones to, to pink 
Okay, so let's test our render. And back to here, render setups. And we have to change the render size to slightly smaller. So I'm gonna switch it down to 1280 times 720. Okay. All right, let's have a closer look uh, without using our cameras and see how it's looking in overall. Okay. Excited after uh, <laughs> quite some time to, to set up. Okay, wonder how it's looking. Wow, this is this is really bad. Okay, what is happening? You know, this is the thing I, I told you about. Okay, that is a displacement. And displacement could sometimes be really cool. And then it can sometimes be really scary. Okay, it's like the biohazard thing that has grown crazy. As you can see that uh, it grows up to here. It even covers... You know, uh, part of our uh, scene, <laughs> okay, which I'm going to cancel it right now. Uh, let's get back to here. Wood material. All right. And, um, okay, go back to maps. And this one should be set to 60. Display should be set to just, you know, like 5 or 10. Okay, let's have a look again. Click this to render. <laughs> okay, a lot better. All right, a lot better. Okay, so it, it kind of depends on how you want it to look like. Okay, so for example, you feel like this, this results is not strong enough. Okay, and by, by the way, I turn this on okay I turn this on so that it can track my mouse wherever my mouse goes it will prioritize for that part to to render first okay so what that displacement does is it, it gives you the, the actual bump so it takes the map and it calculates the the whites and the black and then it extrudes that certain, certain amount so it depends on how much uh, values that you pump in so I pump it about five, so that is why it seems to have that kind of a short distance. Okay, and I ev kind of even clip through my my leather right here. So uh, next we want to look at the, the metal and see how it looks. It looks kind of rough, right? And then we have some reflections on it. All right, cool, baby. So you can see that this is this is what we're we're looking towards. Okay, we want the the metal to be dented. Okay, we want the effects to to come out strong. Okay, so it is not smooth. Okay, dented, not smooth, broken, damaged metal. Okay, kind of very, very close to what initially they they suggested over the, the website right here. Okay, so if you want more of that, you know, like details, you know, these, these kind of details, you can increase the number of uh, values under normal bump, okay, in the, in the bump slot. Okay, and next, let's look at this. So we point our mouse over here. And let's see if we have a mixture of rough surface and smooth metal. Yes, we're seeing our text right here. So whatever that has within the text, it's the, the original color. Okay, without reflections. Okay, that reflection to is totally blurred out because it's, it's rough. Okay, the part where you can see some reflections on it. Okay. Overall, it, it still looks kind of blur, but uh, this black part has a clearer reflections. And I think this, the, the bumpiness of the ladder, it's too much. Okay, so we can make it, you know, slightly uh, more subtle. Okay, softer. 
All right, the bump value should be reduced. And you can see because we have reflections on the wood, so we, we can get some reflections of the light that it's being bounced back to here. Okay, just a bit only. All right, because the reflections is, is kind of rough. Okay, and then as for this one, we get uh, a kind of a clearer, stronger light reflected onto here because it is smoother. All right, so I think this is going to be a long wait. But anyways, um, let's look at uh, our final render picture. All right, this is a, a, a full HD, 1920 times 1080 size. And um, because the, the back surface area, it's it's a black material that has some basic reflections. And with the roughness uh, value on it, so that is why you can see that the reflected image at the back, it's kind of rough and blurry. Okay, and we have this wood uh, that has some reflection, reflected lights that cast onto the edge. Okay, that it captures everything nicely. And uh, of course, we can see some artifacts right here, zigzag. Uh, that is because of the, the resolution of our texture is not high enough. Okay, because if you're using a free account, that is the maximum uh, size that you can get, unless you pay for it. Okay, of course, uh, this will be some kind of, um, you know, UV problems. All right, but uh, we'll talk about it in, in another lesson. Okay, so today mainly I wanted to show you guys that other than this basic setup from the, the first V-Ray material tutorial, you can bring it to the next level, okay? Add some textures, make it look cooler, okay? And then um, how to control the surface roughness, whether you are going to get a clear reflections or blurred reflections with map. Okay, and at the same time, how to get something more realistic, as in like, uh, you know, uh, damaged metal, scratch, okay, rough, rough surface, okay, this is what we, we cover right here, and also how do we get rough wood versus a smooth wood, okay, and of course, a cool neon light, it's to celebrate the next upcoming big titles cyberpunk in December in a few days time okay so uh, yeah kind of excited maybe in future I'm gonna I, I might bring some models inside and then teach you guys on how to render cyberpunk you know like uh, objects seen or vehicles and feel free to comment right down below and uh, what do you guys think about this tutorial if that is it is that helps you a lot in your learning path okay and then maybe what kind of other tutorials do you like to like me to to show you guys okay more and what kind of topics that you want to learn okay so that is all from this tutorial and I'm um, thank you guys for your support and Please subscribe to my channel if you like this content and uh, share around with your friends, whoever that needs this as well. Thanks and I will see you next time. Bye bye.